Hey guys, it's Jessica and I'm finally doing it. Okay, you can stop asking. No, I'm just kidding. Um, a lot of you guys have asked about cleaning brushes, makeup brushes. And I feel like I finally have a system that works for me and y'all are gonna laugh because it is like the simplest system. And what's so interesting is there are so many gadgets and gizmos out there for cleaning brushes. And I've tried a lot of them and I don't use any of them. I feel like there are certain things you have to do to clean a brush and I'm going to show you me cleaning a whole bunch of them because boy do I need to clean brushes desperately. But all of that aside, I feel like I've tried so many drying racks and I think those are cool. I think they work. And if you are dying to try one or you already have one, you love it, that is awesome. I really do think they work. But I've just noticed, I'm like, you know what, the amount of brushes I always need to clean because I always wait way too long and I know I'm not alone. But not only that, it's just, you know, it's easier to set a towel out and let everything dry that way. Now, is that the best for like the ferrules and the glue that kind of holds it all together? Maybe not. I'm sure doing it upside down is best for that. However, I've had a lot of these brushes for years and years through many washes. And I think I can count on one hand. I think only like two brushes of mine, maybe three, have had the ferrule, like the glue come apart and the ferrule come off. And they were on cheaper brushes. So... It's, while that may be true, it's not gonna affect your brushes as much as you think, unless maybe you're brush, washing your brushes like every few days. I go every few months. Now, I know that sounds gross, but keep in mind, I'm typically look, kinda, I'm looking at my brushes over there. There are so many. Um, keep in mind that I'm typically like using, you know, kind of a, a set of brushes, and then after a few weeks, I'll replace it with a different set of, you know what I mean? So I'm going through, I'm using a lot of my brushes up and putting them kind of in a holding area in my closet, like in a tray. I know that's so gross. Where all of the dirty brushes live together. <laughs> As I'm saying it out loud, I'm realizing just how gross that is. Regardless, um, it's my face and my skin cells. <laughs> um, so it's time to clean them. They're going to get a little soapy bath and I'm going to talk about kind of my favorite products that I use and I found a lot of cheaper alternatives to a lot of things as well. So if you want, let's go, let's go to my bathroom. Actually, I think we're going to do it in my guest bathroom. Let's go clean some brushes together, shall we? So I've got all of my dirty brushes. Here's the problem. I have a really bad habit of, because I do try out a lot of brushes, I buy a lot, I get sent some in PR. I kind of have the luxury of being able to kind of take a set of brushes, use them for like a few weeks, then put them like in literally in this tray in my closet and I get new brushes out. So I end up going way too long without cleaning them, which I know is a bad habit, but here we are. <laughs> so I've got sponges to clean as well. I even clean like powder puffs that I have. I don't always use this to apply powder, but I use it to kind of hold um, parts of my face while I apply liners. So I like to clean that from time to time. I even like to try to clean my like eyelash curlers because it builds up a lot of liner. So I'll show you how I do that. So let's talk about the products I like to actually clean with. So some of my favorites, my favorite for cleaning sponges is the liquid blender cleanser. This is the actual beauty blender brand. Um, obviously you can use it with any sponge. In fact, I don't even know that I have any dirty beauty blenders because I really like the L'Oreal one the best, this pink one here. I just feel like this gets the job done really, really quickly. Whereas I also love using the Aveeno baby wash and shampoo, but I do think you have to use like more of this to get the job done. And so it's kind of one of those things that either you can save money and use the Aveeno or you can save time and use the blender cleanser, but they both get the job done, like I said. Um, some other ones, my favorite for actual brushes that's really quick is this Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleanser. I am clearly almost gone with it. That made no sense. I'm clearly almost through using it. I already have another one I repurchased. It's smaller though. I should have just bought the big one. This stuff dries so quickly. Now, some of them that are more dense brushes sometimes take longer anyway to dry, but this is very, very quick drying. There's something in it. It's got a very strong smell. I don't mind it, but I know some people it, it are bothered by it. But this stuff is incredible. I know a lot of, um, it's very professional grade. A lot of makeup artists use it because it does the job so quickly. This is one I've actually never tried. I recently bought the Perian Spirit and I just haven't gone through these yet to open it. Um, so I might give that a try today. And then the, I love having a silicone brush or mat of some kind. This one I know looks dirty, but it's as clean as I can get it, which is why I replace these like every year or so. But I usually buy them on Amazon. I don't know exactly what brand this is, um, but you can find this same kind of thing on Amazon. So I will link the best one I can find on there because that's usually where I replace it from. So love this because I'll show you how I use it with the brushes. And then another thing I recommend, and I'll link anything I'm mentioning down below, this is the Cinema Secrets little tin. 
And so what I do, you'll see, is I'll put some of the brush cleanser in here, and then I can quickly dip the brushes in and then clean them on that little mat that I just showed you. And it's just a really easy way to be able to do a bunch of brushes in quick su succession. Honestly, I use it all the time. Now, do you need the Cinema Secrets brand? Of course not. You could use any kind of jar or bowl, whatever. I just don't like to use like our kitchen bowls for it, so I like having something specific for that. And then I also have some blender cleanser solids. I think these are pretty good too. Um, this I got like for free with a purchase or something. Um, I think these are good too, but again, Dove bar soap works just as well, so keep that in mind. And Dove soap is so cheap. I don't happen to have any with me today, but. And then another thing worth mentioning before I show you how to do it, Elf makes these like daily brush cleansers and these brush, brush cleanser wipes. I wish I were better about using these day to day, but they are really, really nice. Like the wipes, you just can wipe the brushes on them and it just kind of does a quick clean of your brushes. Same with this, you can spray it on your brushes and maybe wipe it off on like, like I always have a washcloth specifically meant for getting ready. Um, on my like vanity so I can kind of wipe the brushes off again I wish I use these more often I'm not great about it But these are really great products and they're pretty affordable So step one was laying a towel down here for them to dry on and then step two is for me I take typically the cinema secret stuff and I pour a little bit in there and we are gonna get started with the little mitt on my hand I usually put the mitt on the hand. That's not my dominant hand. So my left hand and Put that there and let's get started. I usually let the water get a little bit lukewarm. I don't think it really matters, but sometimes I feel like warmer water gets um, everything cleaner faster. So the next step is I like to get the brush wet first and kind of squeeze some of it out. And then I'm gonna dip it in this tin and get it wet. And then you'll start to see that the makeup just kind of runs right off of it. A little squeeze, I do some circular motions back and forth. Squeeze it again. Now, I'll usually look at the brush and kind of see, especially if it's a bigger one that I know I use a lot and I use for quite a while, and I'll kind of look and see if it feels, if you can see any other makeup still in there, I might dip it back in and go over it one more time. But this looks pretty clean, so I shake it and then I lay it on the towel to dry. So when I lay these on the towel, I typically have it hanging off of the edge um, just because that allows air to get on all sides of it. And of course, eventually I run out of room on my towel, but you could fit a good amount of brushes going this way. So I typically reserve the edge spots for larger brushes that might take a little while longer to dry. That way they can kind of get air around at 360. And if you want to, you can really focus, like this is a more dense brush, so I like to focus it on maybe areas where it might get in there a little bit better, like this bumpy area. Now ones that you use for like foundation, like this one, they take a little bit longer to get clean because there's so much buildup of that cream and liquid product in there. You really wanna squeeze from the bottom to get it out of there. So the one huge downside about this Cinema Secret stuff is you fly through it because the brush will soak it up really quickly and it, I feel like I just flew through this thing. So I'm out of that and that's all I got clean. So I'm gonna try the Perry and Spirit for a bit and then I'm gonna switch to the Aveeno so you can kind of see the effectiveness of all of them and I'm just curious about this new one as well. This has a smell too, but it smells like pure alcohol. So I went through two brushes and that already ran out. I didn't put a ton in here, but still that's crazy. So this Perry and Spirit worked exactly the same as the Cinema Secrets one did. Um, slightly different smell, but again, it's going to be quick drying, I can already see, because it kind of repels the water in the weirdest way, but it really, it does get stuff clean. So um, I'm going to switch, because again, it gets soaked up so quickly, just like the Cinema Secrets, because I think they're very comparable formulas. I'm going to switch to the Aveeno, and we're going to try it. I'm going to put it in the same thing. I know some of you guys are probably wondering, um, you know, if you're putting dirty brushes in here every time you're dipping your brush in there, you know, then the solution in there is getting dirty. It does slightly get dirty, but the reality is you're washing it off right away and you're rinsing it right away. And then after about four or five brushes, the thing's empty anyway, you rinse it again. So it never stays dirty for too long and your brushes that you're dipping in there are getting rinsed right away. So I never really worry too much about that. This might not work as well. I, I Usually with this, I squirt it like right onto the glove. So we're gonna try it this way and if it doesn't work, I might do it my old way. I'm just kind of curious, honestly.
this will be the true test because this blush, the pink comes out with the Cinema Secret stuff. Whoa. But we'll see if the pink comes out with just a vino. That came pretty clean. So the Avino totally worked. Um, it did take about double the amount of time to get stuff out of it, but it still wasn't that long. And you know, I feel like this is probably better for my brushes anyway, because it's really gentle and kind of moisturizing. Whereas this stuff, it is drying and it is, you know, kind of harsh. Now the reality is I've been cleaning my brushes with that stuff for so long and none of my brushes have broken, have like, not performed as well. I've not had any issues. So I think it's fine to use the harsher stuff, but this probably is in the long run better for your brushes and it still smells nice. It's not overpowering at all because again, it's formulated for babies. And I mean, it's getting them clean. So the other way I was used to doing brushes when I would use baby shampoo um, is I would just put a little dollop for every single brush on there. But, um, I felt like it kind of was more time consuming than just kind of dip and scooping out of a bowl. But I'm gonna show you the way I used to do it just so you know. So I've got the little bit of shampoo there, I wet the brush, and then I just kind of shampoo it in. It definitely works. And I think this is a great method for brushes that aren't as easy to dip in, like one that's maybe sideways. This is my Artiste brush. This makes it a little easier to just kind of go straight in and make sure that the shampoo is getting in the brush. Now I have heard some people say that, um, you know, I've heard some makeup artists say that they use like the Cinema Secrets ones for spot cleaning, but that they still every month or so or every few weeks deep clean with a shampoo or a true brush shampoo. That's something to keep in mind. For me, I feel like when I use the other stuff, they get very, very clean, so I don't feel like I need to double cleanse it in any way. But again, this would be great for that because you can really get in there and it really lathers up and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna quickly clean the rest of these brushes as fast as possible. I think I might switch to the Perian Spirit just because I know for the eyeshadow brushes, I'm gonna fly through it with these. Um, and then we are gonna, I'm gonna show you how I clean sponges. Sometimes with shadow brushes, I will double or triple up. So I'll get them both wet, I'll dip them both in, and then do that, and it just saves a ton of time because you can kind of hold them separate and still make sure they're getting rinsed. With the smaller ones, sometimes I'll do three or four at a time. These angled liner brushes are great um, to really take your time with because if you've got cream and gel eyeliner on there, they can get really stuck in there but I noticed that the ridges on these kinds of uh, gloves or mitts are great at making sure it all gets out of there. So before I get to the sponges, I like to kind of try to lay all of these out um, to make sure that the ones when I was just kind of quickly throwing them on there that the ones that need that extra dry space have it. And then I just kind of spread out my eyeshadow brushes. Those usually don't need a ton of room. I know a lot of people really like brush trees and things. I'll put an example of a brush tree on the screen right now. Things I used to own, I've owned like two or three different incarnations of it from different brands and I've tried them and I think they are great, but I think that it's one of those things that it's just something extra you have that like I felt like every time I was brushing my, or washing my brushes, I felt like I didn't have the time to get them all stuck in there and then not all of my brushes fit anyway, so I was still having to do this method. And so finally I ended up just getting rid of all of the versions I had because I'm like, I just am not using them. So if that's something you'd be into, great. It's great because the brushes usually dry upside down, but I just found that they were more of a hassle to deal with than it was worth. And this, again, I've not had any problems with any of my brushes over the years when I do, when I wash and dry them in this way. So we are going to wash the sponges. I don't actually use this for the sponges. I don't find that I need to. Um, so what I will do, and again, I'll show you one I'll do a few with the Aveeno and a few with the blender cleanser just so you can kind of get an idea of how they clean. So what I will do is the sponges need to be wet. Um, ooh, too hot. And again, I do like to use warm water for this. Um, so I like to make sure the sponge is nice and wet. Okay. And then my this actual thing won't squirt through. I think it's like stopped up. So I just kind of gave up and I just open it. But typically it will work and you can just squirt it. But what I will do is I will get, I know that seems like a lot, but honestly, I feel like this is the only way I can get these super clean. So I'll take the soap and literally move it all over the surface of this sponge. You can already see stuff coming out, look at that. Isn't that gross? And also very satisfying. 
So I just kind of start rubbing it in and kind of massaging it in, getting little bits of it wet again, but I don't want to put it straight up under the water yet because I'm kind of massaging that soap through, squeezing some of the makeup out. And so I want some of the soap, soap to remain in there for a bit while I'm kind of cleaning it because the soap is what's actually physically getting that out of the sponge. I'm gonna kind of flip it, do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm gonna start squeezing it under there. And sometimes, depending on how dirty the sponge is, I'll look at it again and say, okay, I think I can get a little bit more of this out. So I'll do the same thing, maybe with a little bit less. There we go. Just kind of squirt some there, okay? And same thing, yeah, you can see that there's still stuff to get out of there. Massaging it over there. And once you feel like you can't get any more out of it, you, you squeeze it and you squeeze the water and it's all clear coming out of it, then your sponge is as clean as it can be. Now I have seen tips where you can put it in a microwave for like 30 seconds with like in a bowl of, with just a little bit of water and it supposedly kills the bacteria. I have done that from time to time and actually I might consider doing that after I wash all these because I haven't done it in a while. I don't know if it actually works or not. That's why I'm not doing a video about it, but I've heard it does and it didn't. The few times I've done it, it doesn't like hurt the sponges, so I figure, eh, it's worth the try. So I'll probably do that after this, but for now, let's keep washing. So let's try, I'll do, again, another L'Oreal one, and let's do it with the Aveeno. Um, ah, too hot. Let me get this wet like I did, and we're gonna try the Aveeno and see if it works as well. Okay, so same thing a ton on there, kind of rub it around. This, I feel like it takes longer for this to kind of get in the sponge, if that makes sense. Okay, I might have to stand corrected because that came out way quicker than the other one. I haven't done these side by side before, I just kind of felt like the other one did but I am willing to admit when I was wrong and I wanna make sure there's none trapped in there that it just didn't like get out, you know? But I feel like that got the job done fast. The one thing about um, products like this and the Johnson's Baby Shampoo is you really have to make sure it's all out of the sponge because otherwise the sponge will take on a really weird um, texture that's not quite the original texture. I don't know how to explain it, but if you if you felt it before, you know what I mean. So you wanna make sure all of it's really out of there and it'll just start to feel like a normal sponge again and that's how you'll know, okay, it's all out of there. So, wow. I have to admit the Aveeno did just as good of a job. Now here's gonna be the true test. I'm gonna take the Aveeno one and I'm gonna use the blender cleanser and see if anything comes out of it because if anything does, that tells me that the Aveeno didn't actually clean clean it, it just kind of surface cleaned it. So, we're about to find out. Excuse a little bit, okay, a lot of it. So far, so good, oh. Okay, nope. Oh my gosh, if that is not proof right there. So there is definitely stuff trapped in there that the Aveeno didn't quite get. Is anyone as surprised as I am right now? That's just crazy that that much was still left in there. And it has this feeling in the middle like I can't quite get all the soap out of the middle. Like that Aveeno is just sitting in the center of the sponge and I can't get it out no matter how hard I wring it. All right, we're gonna leave this be, but here's the thing. This one does now feel a little bit different than this one. I feel like the Aveeno kind of changes the structure, but like I said, I haven't done it in a while. I've been using the blender cleanser for so long. They feel different now. That's just crazy to me. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm gonna finish up then with the blender cleanser and obviously I need to order another one. I feel like sometimes there are things in life that are worth the money if you can afford it. Now, obviously, like I said, other things can get the job done. Like I said, I've used the Johnson & Johnson's one, and I feel like that one does a pretty good job too. It kind of gives the same feel to it the way the Aveeno one does, um, but it still cleans it. I mean, it's better to be slightly clean than not clean at all, and if you can't afford the blender cleanser, I mean, it's not that deep. Just wash your sponges with soap. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? But if you really want to make sure it's clean and you can afford it, I really do recommend. No, this is not sponsored or anything like that. I wish, because then maybe they'd send me a lifetime supply of that crap. It's so good. <laughs> So the last thing I wanted to test out is the Beauty Blender Solid. 
Um, I mean, I've used it a ton, obviously, but I wanted to show you how it works on a dirty beauty blender. I'm gonna use the smaller one because this L'Oreal one I have is so ripped. I'm like, eh, I might honestly just toss this. I think it's time. But I wanted to show you how this works. Um, so they sell it to you in like a container and then there's like this thing to kind of hold the soap and then you can kind of clean it out. Obviously I've used a lot of it, but I think it works pretty well too. I don't think it's as good as the liquid. But again, if you prefer a bar soap method or, um, you know, like Dove soap, I do actually think works really well. I don't have any on hand, but I think it works fantastically well. Oops, I broke it. So I just kind of, once I've gotten the sponge wet, I just kind of get it in there, get the soap on there. And the same thing, I just kind of start squeezing out anything I, dang, that worked fast. There's a lot on this sponge on that side. So again, just kind of rubbing it on there just like you would getting soap on like a washcloth, you know, you kind of rub it back and forth on the wet washcloth, same thing. Okay, well that worked really fast. I knew it was pretty good, and again, it's been a while since I've used it, but holy crap. Let's go ahead and try it on this L'Oreal one, even though I'm gonna throw this away just to show you. This one's super dirty, let's see how clean it'll get it. Okay. soap on that side. Let's get some soap on the other side. It's easier when it's a full bar of soap, certainly. So I think that got it pretty clean. I think, again, since I'm throwing this away, I'm not going to go to the extra effort. But, um, it definitely works, and like I said, Dove Bar Soap I think works pretty well too. So I was gonna show you how I clean these kinds of things. This, like a powder puff, I just use whatever soap. So like I'm gonna use the Aveeno because it's easy enough and it definitely will get it clean. Um, and again, this isn't super dirty, but it just gets powder on it and sometimes a little bit of foundation and I just kind of rub it. So this will dry, but that is all clean. And then the last thing I clean is, um, then I also wanted to show you how I clean these. So a lot of times I'll just kind of run it under water. And honestly, again, the soap doesn't really matter. I'll just get a little bit of the soap on my hand and just kind of rub it in there. Of course, I just literally dropped most of it. But just kind of rub it in there and it helps to kind of break down some of the makeup that's on there, obviously. And then I just rub it under the water rubbing on the little pad there too. It usually breaks it down just enough that it's all gone. And then just rinse it all and it is completely clean. There's like no remnant of any sort of liner or mascara or anything on it. So that's everything. You've now seen me clean all of my beauty tools. I'll usually let the sponges hang back where um, the like ends of brushes are since that doesn't really matter as much, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's what I do. That's how I clean them. I wish I did it more often, but you know, I don't. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful and enjoyable for you. I will link anything I mentioned down below, especially like if it's a specific product. Um, like I think the Amazon glove I've been using, I don't know if I can find the exact link. I'm going to try. I need to buy a new one anyway. It's kind of getting gross. So I might see if there's another one out there that's prime and easy to ship to you and not expensive and I need to buy a new one too so um other than that I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up subscribe stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you guys in my next one bye